come on, how great is that, right? Welcome to our hike, I'm Kevin. I mean, seriously, come on, come on. Only in America, right? Only in America. Well, it finally stopped raining. We have a beautiful day for a hike. There'll be no rattlesnakes out here today. They like the dry, hot weather. Uh, we may see some worms on the trail. You know those big old gushy worms? They're actually rattle worms though here. You gotta look out for the rattle worms because they'll just snap at you. Okay, thanks for joining my hike. Grab a candy bar. Let's get into this, come on. My hiking compadre today you may know from the Netflix series, The Indian Detective. He is so successful as a stand-up comic as well, internationally. He performs all over the world at various venues and stadiums and arenas, and he sells out within, within seconds. I mean, it seems like that. I mean, don't even think about buying a ticket. When they say that, don't even think about buying a ticket. They mean it. Just get the ticket. Don't think about it and enjoy. All right, today we're hiking with the witty, the clever, the very funny, the sellout, <laughs> Mr. Russell Peters. Are you comfortable getting a, a straight edge shave from a stranger? You know on, how you see people on my on, face? On your face. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people think you're from India, but you're yeah. really Canadian. It's true. Right? Yeah. From Toronto? Yeah. yeah but a lot of people also think I still live in Canada, and I've been in the States for 12 years now. Yeah. I have Canadians coming up to me. Oh, you're here doing a show? I go, no, I live here. <laughs> when did you move here? Uh, 12 years ago. Are you like a citizen now? No, not yet. So do you have an affinity to the U.S. or Canada or India? Um, basically all three, you know. Canada will always be my home. Um, yeah. When I go to India, although I never lived there in my entire life, I, uh, I feel quite at home there. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, the States is the place that I grew up wishing I could live in. Oh, great hike. I, um... <laughs> You're doing a new tour called uh, the Deported the Tour. The Deported Tour. Where you're going to places I've never even heard of before. Yeah, this one, this one, this one we're hitting places I've never been to. Yeah. We're going to Croatia. We're going to... Lithuania? Lithuania. Lithuania was the fastest selling one on the whole tour. No way. Sold out. Do these people speak English? I don't know, but I think... Or are they just happy just seeing you? They don't care I, what I can't, saying. I don't know, but I think... Here's what I think happened. I very sarcastically have said in interviews a few times... Because the interviewer will usually ask me, uh, do people get offended by your act? And I'm like, no. And they're like, what's the biggest complaint you get? And I'm like, the biggest complaint I get is that I never spoke about the people. Like, hey. And I said this all the time. I go, hey, you didn't do any Lithuanian jokes. And I was like, wow, I didn't know you were there. If I had known, I would have done the 20 minutes I had on Lithuanians. I know. And I feel like they've seen that interview. <laughs> And now they're expecting 20 minutes of Lithuanian jokes. I mean, I've seen you before perform uh, in these big arenas, these big stadiums, and I've even worked with you one time, and I was just so mesmerized at how you control this large group of people, and it's like, you get on stage, you go, where are my brown people at? <laughs> I think I've stopped doing that part now. Did you really? Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> now I know where they're at, they're visiting, you can see them. Yeah, you can see them. <laughs> Do Indians not mind being called brown people? No, when we, I first we, heard that, I thought that's kind of a, you know. Well, we are brown. Name. Yeah, but black people are black. They could be called African American. Not all of them. Is it a phase? Like soon, <laughs> Indians will want to be called Indo-Americans. Yeah. Well, they might, or they might just want to be called South Asians. Maybe the color is a starting point for recognition. Yeah, you know? I mean, when Indian people say brown, we automatically know. Yeah. And because if you say brown, you could mean. Indian, Pakistani, or Sri Lankan, or whatever. Yeah. So here in the U.S., mm -hmm. if you're standing in a group of Americans, and someone's trying to point you out, they'll say, that's that Indian guy. You know. Possibly. Possibly. But, but if you're standing in a group of uh, people in India, mm -hmm. how do they describe you? They'll call me the Canadian guy. The Canadian guy. Yeah. <laughs> What's your fascination with watches and cars? <laughs> Let's start with the watches. Um, I just like shiny things. <laughs> why, why watches and not fishing lures? I don't know, something, something shiny and new about them. And How it's a statement, a... but it's not, uh, it, I don't buy the diamond encrusted ones, you know? Right. How often do you get a new watch? I would say maybe every four or five months, maybe. Wow. What was the worst job you ever had? Selling socks door to door. 
door to door. I never was, even heard of that. It was Who one of those. That? It was a direct marketing scheme in Toronto, and you would go meet at this at this some office building in a, in a middle of a in a industrial area. And then they would give you this big, stupid, motivational thing in the morning. Yeah. And I was like, not into it because I was like, they were like, a hundred dollars a day is the only way <laughs> that they were trying to motivate us yeah. to make a hundred dollars a day. Yeah. And uh, then they would just give you a hockey bag full of socks. And it was like 18 pairs for nine bucks or something like that. And you had to go sell those. Yeah. And then and I, people buy them. Yeah. And they would want you to dress up while you're doing this. And I'm like, Come on, dude. You're making me walk around. They just drop you off somewhere, in, like, in, oh, again, in an industrial area, because oh, man. I want you to hit these offices. But socks are the kind of things that you think, yeah, I guess I could use some socks. Yeah, and I was on fire with it one day. I was, uh, I was banging them out there. I was like, how about you? I was like, I'll take some. I'll take bam, bam, bam. And then I was on that roll, and the secretary's a little bit of a heavy set lady, and I went, how about you, sweetheart? Big girl like yourself could use some socks. <laughs> That's when you heard the needle go, Vroom. <laughs> A lot of people don't know this about you, but you are kind of a boxing jujitsu fanatic. I am, yeah. I boxed uh, in Canada nine years. Why'd you take up boxing? Because I was getting bullied a lot. I just needed to learn how to fight. And did you ever have to use it? Yeah, I used it a few times. I mean, you know, it comes in handy. Why don't you learn how to run? <laughs> Why is it that I think you like to dance? <laughs> I don't actually like to dance. You don't? I, you know, I like to goof around with dancing. I like to dance with my daughter and make her do goofy things. But with you're me. not one of these guys that goes to the club and do those minimalist. No, moves, I know, hate that. Up. I can't. I, I'd rather just bob my head to the music <clears throat> and have a beverage, I'm like a gentleman. <laughs> but you used to be a DJ, right? I still DJ. You still DJ? I still DJ. Yeah. So somebody could hire you for a party. Uh, well, if you uh, yes, as long as you don't want any music past 2003, maybe. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, I'm a good party DJ. Like, you want to have a great party and everybody has has a great time dancing and listening to music and singing along, I can yeah. do that. And that's what you enjoy. Yeah, yeah. It's it's much like comedy. I mean, uh, you're in charge of their emotions for that you know, for that time. You're so right, man. I was thinking about how much I love to play music, a good song for somebody. Right. If they haven't heard it or yeah. even if, even if like, I'm someone wants to hear my Spotify list. <clears throat> right. I get really excited to play it. And they go, oh, that's good. I like this song. Yeah. And it makes you feel really good. It, it, it's, it's that feeling of I've opened you up to something you didn't know about. Yeah. We have a connection with this now. Yeah, when we watch other comics, it's always... Can you really enjoy their stand-up, or, or are you analyzing it all the time? Well, that's the thing. You have to go, and that, that's why people, again, that's why people watch stand-up differently now. Some yeah. people watch it with that, hmm, let's see if this guy's as good as I've heard, or, uh, or I'm a big fan of this guy. Let's, let's see what he's saying this time. Yeah. You know. Would you ever fly in an airplane with Harrison Ford? <laughs> why not? If you're going to go down, you, you might like, as well. You're like a risk taker, aren't you? Uh, you know, it's one of those... I don't, I'm not really afraid of death so much. You're not? No. And you're not even like... A, you're not Hindu or anything, are you? No, I'm an atheist. You're an atheist? You were raised as an atheist? I was raised Catholic. Oh, okay. Yeah, then I read the Bible. And I yeah. said, I'm not, I'm not sure about this. How often do you not go to church? <laughs> Quite often. <laughs> I'm a frequent non, non-goer. What makes you the happiest? Aside from being with your daughter. Um... Honestly, what makes me happy is uh, seeing other people happy. Really? It really, I do genuinely get a joy in seeing somebody else's joy. Hence the stand-up. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I, I like seeing people win. I hate yeah. seeing people lose. It bothers me. That yeah. if I can do something to help you not lose, I'll do what I can. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, Although like it is necessary for the human spirit to lose. Also, when you go see a movie, someone's got to lose. Yeah. When Otherwise, you tell a joke, somebody's got to lose. Someone else's expense. Yeah, you've got to determine who the winner is in the joke. Yeah. A friend of mine, Stuart Francis, used to do this joke uh, back in the 90s. He said, you know, comedy's all de about deciding <clears throat> who the winner and who the loser is in the joke. He said, for instance, I was on stage one night and I made a joke about actor Christopher Reeve. And unbeknownst to me in the audience was a man in a wheelchair who did not find the joke funny at all. However, sitting behind him was a table full of horses who laughed their heads off. <laughs> How are you with deadlines? Uh, when, do you need, when do you need this answer by? <laughs> I was with you once at Duke University, was it? Yeah, years ago. Yeah, and you were playing this big venue there, of course, and your brother's your manager. Yep. 
and you had a couple of guys there and I was really fascinated because all your guys had these little laser pens <laughs> and anytime they saw somebody that was videotaping you with their cell phone they was shining on them yeah and uh, did that did that continue it's still yeah they're really? still on tour with me they I mean I know they're still on tour but are they still trying absolutely. to fly people and absolutely do they I get mean, them all they I mean no leaks so far <laughs> knock on wood you know yeah um, I mean there's that or you could get those green bags that's true. Well, those true. green bags cost you about two bucks a bag. Wow. And if you're doing a 16,000 seat arena, that's going to cost you about $38,000, 32, whatever the math is on that. That'd be 32. 000. Yeah. <laughs> you got guys to figure that out for yeah. you. There's, there's, there's a reason I do stand up and I'm not a regular Indian. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about merch? You got to have some crazy merch going out of your shows. Right? It's basic stuff, just t shirts, uh, BMN, uh, old quotes from old, old acts, and maybe the tour shirt for the new one. DVDs. No, not so much with the DVDs. Produce? Produce, we do sell some cabbage. Oh, nice. And uh, cauliflower. Beautiful. If it's in season. Yeah. Do you play hockey? No. You don't play hockey? No. That's where it gets confusing, because you're Indian, Canadian. Well, you know, I mean, growing up, you play street hockey, because yeah. everybody else is playing street hockey. <clears throat> Did you play then, soccer? No, I don't like soccer so much. You're not really that athletic, are you? Uh, I like, uh, I like <laughs> sports. I like doing sports that you cannot play. You cannot play boxing, and you cannot play jiu-jitsu. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Do they play like um, cricket in India, right? They do. India and the rest of the world. That's just, a sport I would never understand. It's, I don't get it. And it lasts for three days a match. That's crazy. Yeah. What if you got to be somewhere? <laughs> well, then you shouldn't be a professional athlete at that point. That's worse than getting like uh, <laughs> being on jury duty. <laughs> I used to go out with a Chinese girl for six months and she did not find Chinese men attractive. Right. And never dated them. What are your feelings about... Canadian Indian women. Uh, <laughs> well, there's this weird thing that ethnic people run into. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> they either uh, overcompensate by only hanging out with and and or dating their own within their group. Yeah. Which to me is a little asinine, a little backwards. Yeah. I think you got to be open to everything. You can't rule out anybody. <laughs> right. Um, and then especially for some people. Yeah. <laughs> they need to. <laughs> yeah. Widen their. And then there's the people that completely reject um, their their people and try to distance themselves from it as much as they can. Yeah. And again, that's we're dealing with two extremes. You got to find that happy medium. And you know, if, uh, you know, I talk about it in my act sometimes when I see like an Indian couple. I'm like, where are you from? Here, here. You're both from here, and your parents left India so that you could come here and meet the same fucking person you could have met in India. I mean, it, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of calculating for you on stage, isn't there? Was there was a very much you, a lot you of You gather some information, yeah. you kind of put it together through your head, yep. and you know what's going to be funny and what's not going to be funny. Right. But you got to really be on your toes. <clears throat> yes, you, you got to be You got to be 100% aware yeah. in the moment. Yeah. Um, How did you get so much confidence? I, mean, I, don't, I don't actually have that you confidence. Don't. I don't. But it just seems it's like... It's false bravado, a lot of it. <laughs> and that only comes from getting on stage so much and being so comfortable and relaxed, right? Well, it's, it's the fear of bombing. It, is, it goes back to being fearful. It, it goes back to the fear of bombing. If I, if I don't do something, I'm going to bomb. Do you ever get stage fright? Of course. Absolutely. You're never, again, and never above it. Well, I don't... And see, it's not really stage fright. It's more you get in your own head yeah. and you start defeating yourself. Because <laughs> obviously you don't have stage fright. You're doing it every night. Somebody asked me if I got stage fright. And I said, no, I've been doing this for almost 40 years. I don't get stage fright. But then I realized... It manifests itself in another way. Right. Sometimes I will get really tired before a show, I and that's that. my body just kind of shutting down, mm -hmm. like almost preparing for battle. You know. <laughs> let me just let me just recharge real quick. Yeah, yeah. What's on your rider when you're on tour? <clears throat> what do you got food wise in, well, the, in the green room? Well, here's the thing with the rider. I I don't actually know what's on the rider, but I see what is consistently in my dressing room. <laughs> And I go, I guess this is what's on my rider. So somebody makes that decision for you. Somebody made this decision like. for they me. They know so what you like, um, like wheat thins or whatever. It'll be, it'll be a... Coca-Cola. It'll be a meat and cheese platter. It'll be a fruit platter. Uh, a bucket of KFC chicken. <laughs> uh, a bottle of Glenmorangie 18. What's that? Uh, scotch. Oh, so you have a couple shots before you're on? No, I just like to have it there. It looks Maybe good. when I get off stage, people come backstage and can offer them a drink, you know? It complements the KFC. Yeah, it really goes well with it. It really it does wonders for your uh, acid reflux. Uh, somebody, some club owner once told me, 
they said, you know what? Your audience, when, when you come, I got to reorder like uh, red wine. Oh, if you're, you're like a red wine uh, crowd. Mine is uh, food. <laughs> My audience is always like, I always get, our kitchen got slammed, we've run out of food. And I'm like, well, you should have known. <laughs> My people like to eat. We're, we come from a third world country. <laughs> and, but when you come out on stage in one of these arenas, you seemingly have tons of confidence. I guess you have to seem well, that way. No, see, when you're doing those shows, they're your shows. They're yeah. already there to see you. Right. All you have to do is perform. Sure. When you're doing spots at like the Comedy Store or the Laugh Factory or the Improv, <clears throat> they're there to see whoever's on the show. That's true. And that's when you really find out whether your material's good or not because they don't care about you. That's right. That's and there's other guys on there who may be more popular than you. And, yeah. And when and, you go to the Comedy Store, it's, yeah, it's not like you walking out in an arena in uh, Mumbai or somewhere where they're all there to see you. Yeah. It's kind of like maybe they've never even heard of you, right? Yeah, well, yeah, a lot of times they've never heard of me. And, you know, I've walked in there and uh, one night and Chappelle and Jeff Ross were on stage together. It really Then they you. saw me and then they called me up. So it was me, Jeff Ross, and Chappelle on stage. And you could tell that the audience was kind of like, hey, why don't you fuck off so we can watch Chappelle? <laughs> I literally got the vibe. Of I tried saying a couple of funny things. They were like, nah, shut up. Let that guy talk. <laughs> it's like performing for your family. All right, we get it. Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Russell Peters has left the trail. Don't forget to join him on his tour this year. I mean, he's going to be everywhere. There's no excuse. He'll be in Lithuania, Croatia, Belgium, England. I mean... There's no excuse. All right, thanks for joining my hike today. Sorry if it was a little windy. I'm working on that. Uh, please subscribe, turn on notifications, and we'll catch you on the next hike. Happy trails. All right, we get it. <laughs>